Everyone, I was super excited the other day. I opened up Lightroom and there was a new update that actually has some big improvements to Adobe Lightroom. So I thought I'd share about what they are and how I'm gonna use them and maybe you can get some ideas for how you might use them as well. So there are three main things. I think the first thing is the lens blur module. It's new, it says it's an early access, so there might be some issues there. And there's another one called the point color, which gives us more precise control over color. And then for me, the ability for Lightroom, not Lightroom Classic I'm talking about, I'm just talking about Lightroom, to edit photos that are on my computer or on a drive and not have to automatically import them and upload them to the cloud is a big deal to me. So let's look at all three of these things and how uh, how cool they are. So the first thing is the lens blur. So the lens blur, it's a module right over here. You can just see it if you uh, open it up by itself. It says early access right there. And if I open it up, what it does is it tries to do a more intelligent transition between in focus areas and out of focus areas. And this was something that wasn't really possible to do inside of Lightroom, but I think it's something that a lot of photographers can get some use from. I used to do a ton of portraits. I used to do a lot of weddings, and I think I would use this probably all the time. Here are a couple examples. So this one is a uh, quick portrait that I did, and I wanted to keep some of the background in the a picture because it was a family farm. So was, the farm has meaning. So I use my, you know, camera settings to try to get some um, um, focus on the subject, but then to blur out the background. But if I wanted to, for instance, blur out the background even more, I could use the lens blur. So if I click apply, it's going to go in and Lightroom is just trying to figure out what the areas of focus and out of focus are. You could visualize this and you can see the effect that the first, the natural effect is just blur out 50. And this is what Lightroom thinks I want to do, and if we can see the before and after. All right, but we could fine tune it. And it's kind of fun to go in and go to visualize depth. Visualize depth, depth gives us a color indication of what the foreground, middle ground, background, the what Lightroom sees as the gradations between the front all the way to the back. And it will try to preserve those areas of focus where you think that you want to keep it. So right now my focus range is in the yellow, which is kind of like the foreground. Um, and you can see going all the way to the background, uh, it changes. So if we actually go and uh, just look at it regular, if I move this focus range from the areas where you saw that were uh, yellow, and I move that to the background, you could see the focus shifting to the background. That is really cool. It's actually pretty intelligent. Like I am pretty pumped by the ability of Lightroom to do that, uh, to, to find different areas and to... to uh, to keep them in focus or blur them out. I could increase the range of the focus so we can go all the way back, which just doesn't really make much of an impact, um, or I can keep it on the subject. And I could also go in and edit things. So if I think that Lightroom made some kind of mistakes, I could fix them. So for instance, if, if I wanted to blur out a part of the photograph that Lightroom is keeping in focus, I can click blur right there. I could change my brush size um, and I can go in and uh, so I could add that to the area of blur. For instance, you can see it blur and I can increase or decrease the amount of blur in each individual edit there. And I could do the same thing for focus. So if there's an area that's out of focus, I wanted to be back into focus, I would use that. That's kind of cool. And it's a quick one click edit. You know, there's a lot of tuning that you could do. We could go in and increase or decrease the amount of blur overall. Um, you know, and, and for a quick edit, I think this is like a decent quick job. Not bad at all. Uh, you can see one big mistake that I found here is uh, if I zoom in right here, it took this wheat or not wheat, this grass or whatever this is, and it totally nuked the stem going up. Um, so that would be something I'd maybe have to go in and fix. Uh, you know, so it's not perfect yet, and it is in early access. Here's another example. This is a wedding that I did. My uh, Just one of my favorite couples of all time. These two are amazing uh, former students of mine for, well, she was actually was a former student, but, uh, um, he was always around because of Ashley in high school. So they got married and I was the photographer, one of the coolest days ever. So, uh, this was, I had no choice, but to put them here, even though I have a fence with barbed wire in the background, right. <laughs> and it was super bright out that day. It was like, it wasn't very hot, but it was just bright behind me was a big field. Anyways, I had no choice, but to get the fence as part of the background. And so what I could do is go into apply on the lens blur and it's going to automatically try to see the areas that are foreground, middle, back, back, middle ground and background. And then it's going to try to naturally blur those areas from front to back uh, the, or the background or whatever you decide to be the background. And as you can see, it did a pretty good job.
That is pretty cool. It keeps them, it gives them a 3D effect. It blurs that fence so it's not so like, well, it looks like the back of a prison or something like that. And if I zoom in, you can see it does a decent job. There are some errors like right there and right there. And of course, if I wanted to, I could go in and fine tune those. So I could go to blur and I could go in and quickly probably, I haven't done this before. Uh, yeah, blur out that part. Um, and that would be pretty quick to do on both sides. So I like that. And again, we can move our, our focus range from front to back. So, uh, them, there, you know, nothing to focus except for the grass in the front, them in focus, and then all the way only the back in focus. Uh, so it's kind of a crazy deal. Kind of fun. Oh, it screwed up at the back of his head, though, didn't it? It did right there. So, again, it's in early access. It looks like there's some problems, but I think when this thing is fully baked, it's going to be pretty freaking awesome. Oh, I just have to increase the range, right? that um let's go in and fix this a little bit Ooh, that looks really warped so we're going to go in and that's going to be a blur and auto mask is on so it's going to try to see the edges and we're just going to paint that out oh yeah does a pretty good job uh, not perfect but uh pretty good for what it is for a first try lightroom not bad at all i could probably I'd probably get quite a bit of use out of this. Next one up, let's do uh, let's do James out with his awesome car. My neighbor James is amazing. Love this guy. And uh, he's got a really cool car, so sometimes we go out and take some photos. This one is kind of a nice one because it has an easy, uh, you know, James is really in focus, and then there's a nice fall off all the way to the back. So I wanted to see what that looks like. Um, and if I click apply, takes a second to load it up. And then let's see the effect. It'll come up in a second. Looks like it's resource intensive. There we go. Uh, and that is a truly amazing job. That's pretty cool. And you can see the effect zero and 100. That's pretty cool. That's, that's pretty good. Now that's way too much blur, but it's still pretty neat to see. That's pretty cool. Let's visualize the depth. Let's see what it did. So he's going to be in yellow all the way back to black, which is just complete blur. Yeah, look at that transition. The colors really do a good job on this, showing us the transition between yellow, the bright oranges, orange, purples, all the way to the back are what it sees as the focal range. And then we could um, increase that focal range or change it. So just parts of the photo are in focus. That is pretty impressive. That's fun. I like it. I think it's not... 100% yet, but it's pretty cool. And I think for a lot of photos, it'd be a pretty easy one-click, uh, decent-looking blur. The other thing that's awesome uh, is the point color. So we're going to collapse the lens blur. We're going to go on to a new photograph. So I'm going to open up the color module. We're going to look at that real quickly. It's a cool old abandoned building I've seen for many years. And, like, seriously, it's been there my whole life. And I finally, a couple weeks ago, went and took pictures of it, even though it's been there forever. So... In something like this, what I wanted to do originally was to change the brick color from like this kind of uh, subtle orange, a little bit more redder. And originally, if I'm using the color mixer, if I go to the orange on the color mixer and I'm changing that, I'm going to, you know, kind of change the color, shift the color on that orange. It does everything in the photograph. So you can see that it does it even down here in the, in the weeds. Um, I'll change the colors. And unfortunately, the color mixer never had, you couldn't uh, use masking with it. So I couldn't mask just the house and then do the color edits. But point color does two things. It allows us much finer control of the color selections and the color shifting and what you want to do with it. But it also works in tandem with masking. So first of all, real quickly, we can just see what the color thing does, uh, the point color thing does. So it says select the color in the photograph. And I might want to go in and um, take the, the sky. And it has this color that I've chosen right here. I could shift the color. I could increase or decrease saturation. And then I could adjust the luminance. So I'm going to darken that sky just a touch. All right. So right off the bat, that's kind of cool. Um, and now what I want to do is I want to go into the house. And I want to make an adjustment just on the brick. So what I'll do is I'll go to the masking this time. And I'm just going to do a quick brush. 
And we're just going to brush that part of the house really fast. And maybe just uh, we'll add the chimneys to the selection. And it doesn't have to be super accurate because, uh, like, behind the chimneys is just green. So it's not going to shift that color. So now that I have that mass selected, I can go to point color. And I can select a brick on the house. So I'm going to select, like, that right there. Selected the color. And now I can shift that color to be a little bit more on the redder side. So I'm going to make it red. And that looks a little weird. So then I'm going to lower the saturation so it looks a little bit more natural, like it's a red brick house put into the sun. And that's pretty cool. That, that that works well. I can see that my mask wasn't perfect, so I could always adjust my mask. But uh, you see how it didn't impact the grass or the weeds at all? So I was able to isolate the colors and then change it. This is something I've wanted from Lightroom for many, many years. This gives us a lot more of an ability to adjust which exact colors we want. So I can go to another section of the of the tree, for instance, and I can select only the really bright yellows of those. And then if we increase the luminance of that... Oops, I'm in that mask still. I uh, didn't mean to do that. So let's get out of the mask and go to the point color. We're going to get one of the highlights, one of the bright yellows. Ah, Click that, and then we could, for instance, just shift that specific color, make that a little bit brighter maybe, and that's kind of cool. A little too bright, but it's kind of neat. And then I can adjust a lot of fine-tuning right here. I can move that around to different ranges I have saturation saturation ranges and then illuminance range so it gives us a lot more fine control and I'm gonna have a lot of fun delving in and learning more about this and doing it but just my quick uh, edit something like this is cool because I can select just the butterfly and we'll go to uh, I'm just gonna do a brush uh, and we're gonna just paint this butterfly real quickly so my mask is selected Butterfly is, I'm going to go to my point color. I'm going to adjust, click on the orange. Let's see. We'll click on that medium, medium orange. And then we're going to make the butterfly a little bit brighter. See that? And I'm isolating the butterfly. And then what's cool is I'm going to then make a new mask. And we're going to do, uh, we'll do the subject. And it did a decent job. And now I'm going to invert that. Invert subject selection so it's got the background mostly right now. And then I'm going to go into the color selection tool. Go to those oranges. And I'm going to shift those oranges to something a little bit different. And it might not be like a super natural scene. <laughs> I could add ranges to this. Uh, but that's pretty cool that I could take different parts of the image, isolate them, and shift the color, uh, it's pretty exciting. So kind of the same thing right here. Um, if I went in and I did the traditional way of using the color mixer, for instance, and I wanted to make this those reds turn into, uh, you know, like a oranges or yellow, I'm also impacting her bandana. So I don't like that. Um, so I could select her and then adjust that specific color by, her, by itself. Another way I could do this would be to, for instance, there's maybe like a little bit of a, a cast on her skin. And this is just a, a toy setting on the camera. She wants some you know, um, old school looking photographs. And so um, it maybe put her skin color in a little bit, a little bit off. So what I could do is go into the people module and we're going to do not the entire person. We're going to do facial and body skin. Going to select her skin. We're going to create a mask. And then from here, I'll go to the point color. I'm just going to click on her skin and we're going to lower the saturation just a touch. And uh, so I've taken away that color cast a little bit and it's just a really quick edit that does a decent job. And of course I could also go in and lower the texture on her skin just a touch. And uh, yeah, quick edits, pretty cool. The point color rocks. The last thing that Lightroom does uh, that I think the update is really cool uh, that, that it does a cool good job with is go to local right here. It used to always be this cloud one. Everything was always uploaded to the cloud, but now you could work locally. So if I click local, uh, and this is my this is the image that you saw earlier with a sky replacement. So that's kind of fun. Um, I could just work locally now. So if I have an image like this one, this is just on my desktop, and I could work with this image without uploading it to the cloud. So I just have this image loaded up 
And then I could go in and do my edits as normal. Uh, you know, if I wanted to warm it up or something like that and, uh, you know, whatever I want to do, I don't have to start uploading this. This is like a 300 megabyte pan. Um, instead of uploading to the cloud, I'm just working on it on the drive. I could copy this one photo to cloud, which is kind of great. So I could just say, Hey, I want to put this in Lightroom or I'm just editing this real quickly. And then I can just export it from here without putting it into the cloud to upload uh, because I seem to be always uploading and downloading from Lightroom constantly. But that's why I use it is because I want to be able to sync to my iPad or my devices that are not in this room on these drives and Lightroom does a good job for me. But now I could take it and just plug in a drive and edit local files without having to import them all into Lightroom, which I think is pretty awesome. And so this really gives a lot more versatility to Lightroom. So overall, I'm pumped about the update. I think it's going to be very, very cool. I can't wait to learn more about point color and really, you know, get in there and especially with GFX files and see what kind of punch I could do to the color. And uh, you should have some fun messing with these things too. So until next time, if you have any questions, throw them below and uh, we'll talk to you later.